Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Stanley Parable. Now, this is kind of... I, I haven't played this game at all yet. I've never seen anybody play this game. I just heard it's really good, and uh, that's where I'm going with this thing. Now, I find it really funny that... This little computer monitor right here is like a mimic of exactly what my computer monitor sees. And ironically, like this is the a little red thing in the window. I can, I can move that around. Look at that. That's crazy. I actually, when I record with Fraps, it's got the little red counter in the corner, which does not record on videos. But it's funny. It's actually putting it in the computer screen in the corner. And I did, did a test recording real quick, and it was there. So I found that kind of funny. But anyways... Guys, the Stanley Parable, I don't know like anything about this game, but I was told it's a lot of fun, and I was told I'd have a lot of fun with it, so let's begin. The end is never, the end is never, the end is never, end is loading. Oh, the end is loading. Is never the end? Maybe that's what it says. Is never the end, not the end is never. Is never the end? It's a question. Or never the end is. Never the end is also would make a lot of sense. You know, never the end is means something. It's, it's Yoda actually speaking. Never the end is. I, I, I mean, sure. Got, got, got to do filler on the loading screen. I don't know. I don't know this is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour, when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. So I'm assuming, okay, this is the point where I have control. So I am employee number 427, working in office 427, and all I've been doing is doing exactly what the screen has been telling me to do. Feels kind of like lost. Now, can I do anything? I don't know how you interact with Uh, okay. I'm just going to assume it's going to tell me what I need to All be doing. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. The meeting room. Um, okay. I can't open these doors, it doesn't appear. Is this the meeting room? It's the copy room. Why is the copier out in the middle of the world there? Where's the meeting room? That's kind of like a meeting room. Can't get into it, though. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. I, I did? Uh, I'll show you. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. But I can't go back. Okay, that's interesting. Um, so I guess I'm going to go to the employee lounge to admire it. Papers all over the floor. 
Ah, yes. Truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. <laughs> okay. I'm assuming that's my cue to leave. Yeah, but eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. <laughs> it's it's like uh, Stranger Than Fiction almost, but instead of them narrating my life, because they know what's going to happen, they're narrating my life based on what I do. Like, the narrator's just, like, playing a game, and he's like, uh, yeah, I mean, he decided instead to... <laughs> And so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. This is cool. It's like telling... I don't know anything about this game, but it's telling a story based on the actions that I take. And I'm assuming they're based on the order that you take them, because had I gone straight to the meeting room, this would probably be different when I get in this area, I would guess. So... I'm guessing I can go down here and it would change the storyline as well, or I can continue on with the narrator set I'm supposed to be doing. So let's see if I continue on. It's like a which way book without actually giving you the obvious choice. You have to find the unobvious choice. Let's go to the meeting room. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office hoping he might find an answer there. I wanted to see those tips for not getting fired again. That was cool. Wait, where's the projector? Oh, it's on the ceiling. Can I, I, man, that's a good projector. I can stand right in front of it. Using slides to assure employees that everything's okay. Make sure your slide has a slick blue graphic in the header and throw some bevel. Aw, everyone is unique. You, most of all. He know, they know me so well. I can't believe that they made this slide presentation just for me. At least this slide on it. Number of slides on this slide. That's wrong, though. This slide only has one. It should be a filled-in pie graph. Rate it which charts in the same slide depict the same information. That is a good slide. I'm going to put this in a presentation that I do. Rates of increase in graphs per slide. <laughs> There's more. <laughs> Please, no more charts. Oh, this is great. The Boss Appreciation Minute. Uh, on our boss appreciation minute worksheet, circle the top 20 things you love most about your boss. Fill out in triplicate and refer to your boss appreciation. Dude, this is awesome. I just want to read this whole thing. Solving interpersonal conflict. If you ever find yourself in a conflict with another diligent employee like yourself, but more inclined toward conflict, unless you're a kind person that initiates... Oh, dang it. Oh, uh, I, gotta, I gotta just sit here one day and read all this stuff. What do people want? Things they crossed off happiness. Mike James, you were fired. Money, more money, things, but with money to buy more things. <laughs> crafts, crafts about money and things. Oh, God, this is great. Uh, if you don't work in to do synergize core values expenditures, that's like bullshit bingo right there. Uh, God, this is so funny. Oh, I can actually go in the broom closet. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Wait, there's got to be stuff in here to play with then, right? There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow, just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. You're lying, narrator. Oh, I can't jump in this game though, huh? It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. <laughs> he wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. <laughs> I'm waiting, there's are gotta you, be... Are you really still in the broom closet? Standing around doing nothing? Why? Please offer me some explanation here, I'm, I'm genuinely confused. Uh, you know what? <laughs> Hang on one second, guys. All right, guys. I'm back. I, uh... Oh, crap. I started the game again. I'm gonna, gonna meet us back in the broom closet. 
Hey guys, I am back. Resume the game. I actually came back to the broom closet. I walked in it, and it almost like I, I took all the choices that I made previously and came back. The reason I wanted to stop the game in the first place was because I wanted to get the webcam up because... Uh, I pointed to that screen. I wanted to get the webcam up because... Uh, I was having so much fun with this, I was laughing so hard, I wanted you guys to actually see that reaction. But I walked in here and he said, no, 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 he wasn't going to say anything more, he's not going to, like, get me in the broom closet. But, I might have missed it, because, I don't know, I had just walked in here for the first time, I might have remembered that I was here before. I really wanted to say more stuff about the broom closet, though. Come on, tell me about the broom closet! Oh, okay, I guess we missed some dialogue in the broom closet. Stop it, booby. Sorry. Oh, I wanted to go back there. Let's see. Huh? Oh, okay. No more bro- will stop your brain. Oh, that thing. Okay. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. This is one of those games where I need to do this on a live stream and just have people tell me where I'm going to go. I'm going to go downstairs, not the boss's office. Ooh. Uh down here. So he hasn't said I've made a different choice yet. I'm assuming when I go through this door, though. No? But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? <laughs> why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief, Stanley felt, to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job, he wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. <laughs> just, I have to go back to my boring real life job pushing going. buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself <laughs> flying and began to gently float what above the, the ground. Then he imagined himself <laughs> soaring through space on a magical star field. And it too appeared. It was so much fun. And Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. This is so trippy! How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. <laughs> Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now <laughs> as he's ever been in his life. I'm afraid to walk through this door. Well, hearing the voice that he'll stop. It was quite a shock to Stanley. <laughs> After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too, surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control, that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. Let me wake up. I'm through with this dream. I'm I wish it to be dream. over. 
I wish it to Let be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me go back to Let my me job. continue pushing the buttons. Let me continue Please. pushing the buttons. It's all I Please. want. It's all I want. I want my apartment. I want my apartment. And my wife. And my wife. And my job. And my job. All I want all is my I life want is exactly my life. the way it's always exactly been. Exactly is the way it's always been. My life is normal. My life is normal. I am normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. Everything will be fine. I am okay. I am okay. And I'm still here. <laughs> Stanley began screaming. Jesus. Please, someone, wake me up. My what? name is Stanley. Oh. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. What Please, happened? just someone tell me I am real. I'm I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? What is happening? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. But, 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 but. I think if I go through the door, this narration part will stop because it'll be the next section. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. What the hell? Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, Ma and walked to her place of work. Mariella! But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself then collapsed dead on the side. Is that Stanley? And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy. This much she knew. Why, well, he's Everybody just dead. knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. Okay. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. But to her meeting? Is that your typical reaction when you find a dead body? Uh, am I Mary Ellen? Or am I... N no. I'm Stanley now, right? Because I'm 427. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. What is happening? This is... Was that stuff like this before? I think so, right? Um... What if I do go to the meeting room this time? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors... See, this is what I was afraid of. Left. Moving into a door and starting the next scene... This is the meeting room, right? Yet there was not a single person here. Just trying to talk less to him. Feeling a way of disbelief. Every day was no Stanley decided to go up to his fired. boss's office. Tips for not getting fired. Don't get fired. Find an answer there. Okay, so this just starts. Oh, here we go. Oh, damn it! Uh, I wanted my broom closet. <laughs> um. So Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Okay, let's go up to the boss's office this time. So I've done everything they've asked me to do at this point. Can I look back here? No. What does that say? Oh, business time. It's a magazine. Okay. Okay. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this. What dark mm. secret was being held from him? What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. <laughs> uh, uh, phone's going off, sorry. 2845. Let's do not 2845. Oops. Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs, trying
trying to input anything on the device was useless, since he could never possibly know that the combination was 2845. <laughs> I'm going to put it in the wrong one again. Stanley simply began entering 2845. <laughs> well, what was that? 3680? Three, One, 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 one. Forgot, but it turns out that the panel's emergency override kicked in. Oh, shoot. And the door just opened all by itself. <laughs> and Stanley got the hell along with the story. Well, whoop de do. <laughs> I'm going to punch it in now. Come on, tell me I'm a genius, narrator. <laughs> Okay, some packing foam for some odd reason, a generator, a trailer generator. Ooh, it's really dark back here. Uh, ooh, oh, you can't go back. Oh, crap. Okay, you can't do anything back here, though, huh? Nope, okay. Okay, moving on. I said moving on, not Ubi. Yes, you do, Ubi. Yes, you do. Okay, so we know that there's that chick that will find my dead body. And then I start over, because I apparently went crazy mad. I don't know if that's because I sat in that Deeper room for two. Building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. I don't want to answer the question. Let's see. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Hmm. Really? <laughs> um, escape? Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. <laughs> Go back! But of course, Stanley thought better of it and realized he simply had too much to live for. I kind of want to go to my violent death, but I got to heed that warning. Hello. I can't read this. Uh, lights. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this oh. place hold? This Stanley is, thought to himself. It's like Professor did X's. Did he have the strength to find out? Or Professor Xavier. Uh, I don't know. Do I have the strength to find out? Cameras, bunch of computers. Can I do anything with the computers? Are these papers? No. Nope. Button. Now the monitors jumped to oh my life. god. Their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building. There's my desk. And his co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Is, is there anybody here? I'm looking for anybody. I wonder who's that, who's that one? Whoa, 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 whoa. Fired! Who got fired? What's, what's, uh, why is it all, oh. Oh, I need to see, I need to see which one that one is. 528, there was a couple more over here as well, so maybe that's not that important, but. What's on this side? This look. This room looks really cool. That's for sure. Uh, people. This mind control facility. It was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. 
Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? Um... Can I go back to... Oh, I can't. I was gonna say, can I go back to my death now? No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? It seems to be the case, yes. Here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content, walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Um, how? And... There's lots of buttons to choose. There's lots of screens that are telling me this thing is offline. I can turn the power off? I can... Press some of these buttons. Is this the online one? This looks like the one that'll turn it back online. Can I turn it back online? Can I control it forever myself? Nope. Apparently I can't hit that button. Let's... It just says that they're offline. Can't do anything with these consoles. There's another button up here. Oh, there's a three. I mean, am I supposed to do this in order? I mean, I obviously am wrong with the order if that's the case. I figured this is a power button as well, but that didn't do anything. Um, here's one and two. So then one, two. I could then hit three. It doesn't seem to have done anything, though. I am unsure. Stop phone. I'm unsure what I should be doing in this room, if anything. Mind control idle. Awaiting inputs. Okay. Oh, here's the system power. At last, he found the source of the room's power. He knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place. And to everything it stood for. If I turn it on, am I the guy in control? I'll be the guy in control. Oh, Stanley. You didn't just activate the controls, did you? Yep. After they kept you enslaved all these years, you go and you try to take control of the machine for yourself. Is yep. that what you wanted? That's exactly control? what I wanted. Oh, Stanley. I applaud your effort, I really do. But you need to understand, there's only so much that machine can do. You were supposed to let it go, turn the controls off, and leave. If you want to throw my story off track, you're going to have to do much better than that. I'm afraid you don't have nearly the power you think you do. For example, and I believe you'll find this pertinent, Stanley suddenly realized he had just initiated the network's emergency detonation system. A what? In the event that this machine is activated without proper DNA identification, Nuclear detonators are set to explode, eliminating the entire complex. How long until detonation then? Mm, let's say um, two minutes. Two minutes! Ah, now this is making things a little more fun, isn't it, Stanley? It's your time to shine. You are the star. It's your story now. Shape Ooh. it to your heart's desires. Okay. Oh, this is much better than what I had in mind. What a shame we have so little time left to enjoy Three. it. Mere moments until the bomb goes off. But what precious moments each one of them is. Three. More time to talk about you, about me, where we're going, what all this means. Incorrect. I don't really know where to start. Incorrect. What's that? Yellow. You'd like to know where your co-workers are. A moment of solace before you're Yellow. Invited. All right, I'm in a good mood. You're going to die anyway. I'll tell Three. you exactly what happened yep. to them. I erased them. I turned off the machine. I set you free. 
Of course, that was merely in this instance of the story. Sometimes when I tell it, I simply let you sit there in your office Day forever, one. pushing buttons endlessly and then dying Wait, alone. Oh, shoot. Other times, I let the office sink into the ground, swallowing everyone inside, or I let it burn to a crisp. I don't get what they want me to say do. this, though. This version of events has been rather amusing. Watching you try to make sense of everything, Hold and take back the control wrested away from you, it's quite rich. I almost hate to see it go. But I'm sure whatever I come up with on the next go around will be even better. My goodness, only 34 seconds left. Stop. But I'm enjoying this so much. Me too. You know what? To hell with it. Incorrect. I'm going to put some extra time on the clock. Why not? Executing buttons. These are precious additional seconds, Stan. Time doesn't grow on trees. Uh, oh dear me, what's the matter, Stan? Power Is surgeon. You have no idea where you're going or what you're supposed to be doing right now. Yes. Or did you just assume when you saw that timer that something in this room was capable of turning it off? I mean, look at you. <laughs> you sub Running bitch. From button to button, <laughs> screen to screen, <laughs> clicking on every little thing in this room. These numbered buttons, no, these colored ones, or maybe this big red button, <laughs> or this door. Everything, anything, something here will save me. Why would you think that, Stanley? Oh, I have our time. This video game can be beaten. One yes. soul. Do you have any idea what your purpose in this place is? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Stanley, you're in for quite a disappointment. But here's a spoiler for you. That timer isn't a catalyst to keep the action moving along. It's just seconds ticking away to your death. You're only still playing instead of watching a cutscene because I want to watch you for every moment that you're powerless. To see you made humble. This is not a challenge. It's a tragedy. You wanted to control this world, that's fine. But I'm going to destroy it first, so you can't. <gasps> Goodbye, employee 427. What? That's 30 seconds you have left to struggle. 30 seconds until a big boom and then nothing. No ending here. Just you being blown to pieces. I don't know what to do! Desperately to your frail life. Or will you let it go peacefully? Okay. Another choice. Make it count. Another okay. choice? It's all the same to me. All a part of the joke. And believe me, I will be laughing at every second of your never to Hurry up, hurry up, get to the, get to the off until button. The moment I say, happily ever up. No! <laughs> no! I don't have any idea what I was supposed to do. I don't have any idea what I was supposed to do. Oh, man. Well, guys, uh, stay tuned for the next episode when I try this again and... Uh, this game is amazing and confusing and so out there. I wish I had come across this game before. This is awesome. Um, hopefully I'll figure out what to do. and Or or hopefully I won't figure out what to do, I guess, because it's too much fun to play. Um, so anyways, guys, stay tuned. I will see you next time.